Going forward, we're going to talk about the uh, basic anatomical terminology for section one or module one of this class. Um, and this terminology is going to be important, especially when we get to uh, the kinematic comp component of the class in module two, um, where we're going to describe the human motion that we see in space. And um, this terminology is essential that we're all on the same page. So when we talk to each other, we know what we're talking about. So we're first going to talk about a couple types of motion that, that are, are geared towards human motion and, and the different types of motion. And it, it's really about the reference system that we use. But linear motion is referred to as translational motion as well. So those are two different terms that you can use when you talk about the same type of motion. But it's important to understand that when we talk about linear motion, the motion can be along a straight path, but it also can be along a curved path. Uh, the key component here is that all the points in the object move the same distance in the same amount of time, right? So when we look at this um, image of this person doing a, a forward or a cartwheel or a backwards flip, um, where this point here, and you'll understand this a little later, is referring to the center of mass of the individual. So when we talk about this motion, yeah, there's rotation going about that center of mass. When we talk about the center of mass itself, that is the linear portion of this, um, and it's along the curved path. Differently, when we talk about angular motion, um, angular motion is where all points occur in, around some point. And this point is often referred to as an axis of rotation. Um, and you have three different types of axis of rotations here. So here again, you have the second center of gravity or the center of mass. Um, here you have the hands acting as um, the center of rotation for this person to go through. Um, and then here with this person running, each of the individual joints and motions of the arms and legs have its own um, axis of rotation or center point, which all the rotation occurs about. Uh, but the important definition here with angular motion is that all points along the segments, um, if we extend this person out, point this point and this point, they go through a different range of motion or different distance in the same amount of time. And that's where you have the difference between angular motion and linear motion. Is in angular motion, all points go through the different distance in the same amount of time. In linear motion, all points go the same distance in the same amount of time. Going forward, it's important to understand a number of anatomical terms going forward. Um, and this is where it's truly going to become the functionality part where we are going to be able to describe human motion in the same terminology. Please make sure that you know and understand all these terms because um, in the following slides, we'd be able to illustrate uh, motion in different planes about different axes and we'll all know what we're being able to talk about. So please spend time um, in the PowerPoint slides if you haven't learned these terms yet to make sure you focus on those and add all these terms to the terminology sheet which is very important um, another key component is to understand the basic difference between the anatomical starting position and the fundamental and it truly and is oriented about how the arms are positioned whether your hand an arm is supinated, which puts a little bit of rotation and change in the position of the shoulder, but also in the way the radius and the ulna and the palm is facing in the upper body. Essential to describing human motion is understanding that we have three orthogonal planes of human motion, um, and they each have a corresponding axis, which intersects about 90 degrees to the plane. Um, the, the three components are sagittal plane, transverse plane, and the frontal plane. The sagittal plane divides the body in the left and right hemispheres, and it inter is intersected by the medial lateral axis. So here we have the medial lateral axis. It goes through this direction, and this is the sagittal plane here on the very bottom, but it's, as you can see, it divides it into left and right halves. So that is going to be the sagittal plane and medial lateral axis. We also have the frontal plane, which is going to divide the body into anterior posterior components. Um, and that is intersected by the anterior posterior axes. And the last one is a transverse plane, M much less of um, what happens in a biomechanical analysis laboratory it occurs in transverse plane only because it's very difficult sometimes to get that, especially at the knee. Um, but this divides the body into up and down or inferior and superior. Um, portions and it is intersected by the longitudinal axis. Much of the motion that happens along this plane is rotation.
Going further, um, it is important to understand that the human structure and function is, is providing a reference and designation as to how the human body is, is oriented and formed and, and how it's moving about that. So a couple of key components is A, the axes, and these are the imaginary lines um, that intersect the planes at right angles. Furthermore, origins are the common points of intersections between multiple axes. In dealing with human motion, we deal with three dimensions of motion, and that's often referred to over here. We use, typically use Z, X, and Y. Now you will see these three, in, in typically it's like this, X, Y, and Z, and depending on the laboratory you use or the referencing you use, sometimes you'll see X meaning medial lateral, sometimes you'll see X meaning anterior or posterior, so it depends on the orientation of body. Most of the time nowadays you'll see Z or Z, and that's the vertical component, uh, but there are times where Z will be a different, one of the other um, planes of motion, but for our key purposes, these are what we'll be using, X, Y, and Z, and depending on the orientation, X and Y will often be um, changed. When we're dealing with two-dimensional, which you have here, you typically have an X and a Y. Um, Z is the one that typically gets thrown out in the two-dimensional world, and so typically you have the X and Y, and that's what we all pretty much know about um, with the quadrant systems, positive, positive, um, negative, positive, negative, negative, and positive, negative. So those are your four quadrants in a two-dimensional world. Here's just another diagram of how to orient and, and see the interplay of the cardinal plane, sagittal plane, transverse plane, and frontal plane, and their axes, the longitudinal, medial lateral, and anterior, posterior, about the knee. So you are kind of looking at this, and this is the right knee, and you're kind of looking at it from a posterior view um, from the midline. Um, and so you'll have the anterior view up here, and this is the posterior, and you kind of look at a little angle, as you can see. So here's the sagittal plane going this way, um, and then you can see how the axes of rotation fly, fall into play there. So just another description, another um, illustration of the planes and how they go about the different uh, joints and angles of the body. Key components and, and key terminology that I want you to focus on is understanding flexion extension of the different body parts um, and understand that flexion extension occurs in the sagittal plane of motion. Um, and then by looking at these, you can see how the head, the arm, the forearm, the trunk, um, and these individual components, what flexion extension looks like of those individual body parts. But remember that that flexion extension occurs in the sagittal plane. And then here we have abduction and adduction. Uh, these are key motions that occur in the frontal plane of movement. It is essential to understand that adduction or adduction uh, refers to motion that is bringing the structure towards the midline, whereas abduction is bringing the segment away from the midline. And you'll see all that here uh, with the different segments of the body, making sure you understand uh, what each component is. Finally, the last major movement is going to be in the transverse plane, um, and that's rotation. Um, rotation has a couple in interesting words that lead for it, and oftentimes it could be either internal or external, could medial or lateral, or right or left. Each one describes um, the, the two types of rotation that can occur at either the segment or the joint. Um, so just make sure that you know each one, um, what you're talking about. Oftentimes, especially with this um, thigh motion down here, the medial and lateral rotation, oftentimes we refer to what's happening at the hip, and it could be an internal, external hip rotation. Um, so depending on where you're talking about, that is really what comes down to what type of rotation terminology you're going to be using. All right, so here we have some of the uh, more specific motions that occur in different body parts or different regions um, from lateral flexion extension um, or lateral flexion right or left of the trunk that occur in the frontal plane. You're also going to see very common, here we have supination and pronation. Um, and But a key component, too, is understanding the difference between dorsiflexion, plantar flexion, eversion, inversion, and what is also referred to as abduction or adduction of the forefoot. Here you have your traditional scapular de depression elevation. So these are more specific um, up to different body parts and regions. Going forward, a key component to much of what we're going to do, especially because I do endurance running research, um, is understanding what pronation and supination are of the foot. 
Um, and they're really a combination of three key components. So pronation is this idea of dorsiflexion, so upward motion, um, eversion, so bringing the foot out towards, and abduction, which is again, uh, that outward motion or away from the midline of the forefoot. So eversion happens at the tarsals, abduction at the forefoot, and then dorsiflexion of the ankle. Where supination is simply the opposite of each of those. Instead of dorsiflexion, it's plantar flexion at the ankle, followed by inversion at the tarsals, um, and then adduction in the foot. So these are the two key components, and you have a nice little illustration of the X and Y and Z. And again, if you look at this, this has the Z not going in the vertical, but that Z is coming in the anterior posterior axes. So just understanding what your frame of reference is, um, X, Y, and Z. This is not typical of what you'll see, but you can see where the motion occurs about what axis. To conclude the uh, conversation on reference systems, it's essential to understand that there are many ways that we can describe a motion. Um, and the way we choose is really independent of um, the reference system at which we are using. Okay, um, we will go over more about the absolute and relative angles in the angular kinematics portion of the class, but it's very important that you in, or introduce these concepts early on in the class when we're talking about anatomy, because it's gonna set the groundwork for how we describe uh, motion. Okay, absolute angles, these are also term segment angles, and that's because they refer to the orientation of the segment. Um, this orientation of the segment in reference to space or another reference system. And that reference system is also often the origin through a distal or proximal joint center. Um, a common reference is the distal end of the segments with respect to the right horizontal. You understand what more that means later on. But anytime I talk to an absolute or segmental angle, just understand that I'm talking to things like the thigh or the leg or the forearm or the trunk. As opposed to relative angles, and these are um, also referred to as joint angles. Um, and joint angles are, for, are, are formation of the angle between two segments, knee, ankle, hip, um, to where you have the angle of two segments coming together and forming a joint angle between them. Um, so they often come together to form the origin or axis, um, and then you will calculate how much room or space is in between them from an angular perspective.